dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I welcome you to this week's edition of the St. Jude Parish Chatter. We've now arrived at the fifth Sunday of Lent, and I'm here with Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Father. How are you doing? We are making our way through Lent, and it's going faster than I expected it to go. It's going faster than you expected it to go, and you've already gotten to the point of Lent where you got to celebrate your birthday. Happy birthday a few Thank days late. Thank you. I had my birthday, and so, um, yeah... I, you'll have to come up to me and ask what year was I born. I'm not going to say how old I was because I don't want people stealing my identity. But I can say my birthday was March 20th. So on last Monday was my birthday. Oh, well, happy birthday. And, and There's another birthday around here, though, I understand, too. Who's having a birthday? There is. Week? Tomorrow is my birthday. Happy birthday, Tyler. <laughs> Thank you. So you don't have to say how old you were, but but which day is it? And March 26th. March 26th. So yep. Tyler and I are, are both in the March 20s. And what were birthdays like when you were a kid? What was the celebrations like? You know, I don't remember, like, always having a bunch of, like, big birthday parties. I feel like anymore, like, all, all these kids, there's always going to be these big, extravagant birthday parties. Mm. I don't ever remember having those, and I'm glad I didn't. I didn't I didn't want something like that. Um, <laughs> I remember having a piñata when I was a kid. Oh, wow. So there was a big birthday party. I was probably five years old, six or seven, and the they had to put the rope through the tree. <laughs> and so the rope was up through the tree, and then it would be spun around. And I remember I got, like, a special privilege that I could hit the piñata without out a blindfold which has the added advantage that you don't hit any of your friends with the stick around you so that's always the trouble with a piñata is that people get hit but i remember a piñata at one of my birthday parties but that would definitely be one of the bigger parties right. usually it was just a smaller party yeah. and um, living on the farm i could always have friends come over to visit for my birthday and it was um yeah a smaller event and um, yeah, it's good memories from my birthdays. Yeah, so yeah, we never really did too much. My my, break, my birthday was always over spring break, so I loved that. I never had to go to school on my birthday. Um, but yeah, one we, of the great gifts from my birthday was a grandma and grandpa would often come to visit for my mm. birthday. So my grandparents lived in Iowa. I grew up in Arizona, of course. And it, it turns out, I understand this now. Iowa is a lousy place to be when it's in the middle of winter, and so grandma <laughs> and grandpa would often come in February and into March for our birthday. Or, or they happen to be there for my birthday. And yeah, they'd stay for a couple of few weeks and they'd get out of all the bad weather in Iowa. But that was always a great treat that uh. they would take me out for my birthday and we'd go to a restaurant, yeah. which was a big deal when I was a kid. You didn't go to restaurants very often. Yeah. And I could order anything I wanted off of the menu. Thank you, Grandma <laughs> and Grandpa, for your generosity. I was the luckiest kid on the planet. So that was my family's tradition also for family for birthdays. We'd always just go out to a restaurant and it was always fun. They, whoever's birthday, they got to pick where we went. Mm. Uh, and yeah, there was always just a joy of just, it was getting together. And we've continued you know that even now you know you know i'm off with my own family we try to get together with my, my parents you grew up in oregon right uh so, for a few years yeah like yeah. it was only a handful of years but when we lived out there um what that's actually a where... restaurant what was the restaurant you would choose uh i the restaurant i remember going to when we lived out there we lived with my, my great great aunt and uncle mm -hmm. and the restaurant i remember going to for some bigger events was the sizzler um mm. oh sizzler it's a chain place <laughs> it's a chain place oh I, I would always choose like the the local ones that didn't have a chain so the <laughs> regal was the name of the of the restaurant when i was a kid the place is closed down now but the regal and and it was actually just a burger a burger joint right but i loved it and that was my place and yeah if i could ever just order french fries as a side order that's what always what that's i always, had yeah turns out i just loved the salt but <laughs> that was my life as a kid as i grew up when we moved here to colorado i, I like going to i'd pick going to dave and buster's because then i get to go play all like the video Video games and fun things afterwards as well. Is it still open? I don't know this place. Yeah, it's a. It's a. There's only a couple of them. Like there's one off Colorado Boulevard and I-25, and huh. yeah, go check it out sometime. It's uh, all place. sort all sorts of <laughs> fun things there. So, uh, birthdays, happy birthday to you and myself and anyone else that has a spring birthday. It's a great time for birthdays if you ask there's me. There's another big party coming up for the parish. There oh, is this. another big party coming this is up. Our sponsor, here. our sponsor for the week. Uh, make sure I have the information from you. I want you to all. Get your calendars ready. I want you to save the date for April 15th. Yeah. And no, it's not because we're all getting together to do our taxes together. <laughs> but we're getting together to celebrate the retirement for, for Father Bob Kinkle. Yeah. Uh, we finally have the opportunity to, to come together to celebrate his many years of service, not only to St. Jude, but, but to any many other parishes throughout the Archdiocese. And there's a committee working on this party. This oh, is yeah. going to be a great celebration for the parish. So make it a point to come and be with us. And even though the doors are open at 630, it's a come and go as you want, a, mm -hmm. a meet and greet. So you can show up at 7 o'clock or 730 Absolutely. and everybody is still going to be there. And I think it's going to be a great parish celebration for St. Jude Parish. It's, it's going to be a great day. So, yeah. So, April 15th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. In, in the community center at a lower level. Come join at any point during that point to come 
you know, come see Father Bob, celebrate his many years of service, and, and celebrate especially the many years of service he gave here to St. Jude as a pastor. Decades. You can count them in decades. Yeah. It's rare that a priest can say that he's served the parish for decades. But Absolutely. Monsignor Bob Kinkle has served our parish for decades, and he's going to be the main celebrant at the 5 o'clock Mass that Absolutely, night. Absolutely, yeah. So you can plan to come to Mass and then yep. and then hang around afterwards for the little events. Be wonderful. Well, we're fifth Sunday of Lent already, and uh, we've we've got a, a wonderful gospel reading. So, Father, would you, would you help us enter Absolutely. into that? Yes, let's listen to this reading. It's beautiful. It's the raising of Lazarus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after, he, uh, then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one whose coming was foretold. Jesus became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. Because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands. His face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary, had seen what he had done, began to believe in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Tyler, I'm always struck by the line, Remove the stone. Hmm. And it... um, it's just such a beautiful meditation for me because our hearts get stony sometimes. There's this stone in front of our hearts and it blocks the Lord Jesus from being able to get in there. And that's the Lord's first command as he wants to work this miracle is remove the stone. And the first thing that happens after the, the command to remove the stone is objections. <laughs> Lord, by now there will be a stem. She's been dead for four days, which I hear as being the same as um the reason we can't remove the stone from the heart is because it's been such a long time that we've been mm. doing these things. We've we've done sin for such a long time. We've been bad for so long. We're, surely we can't remove right. the stone. And that's often the objection that people give whenever they, they are afraid that the stone might be rejected, uh, m- might be moved to one side. But it's our fleshy hearts the Lord wants. He wants the mm. love of our hearts. That's so beautiful. I, I love that uh, that idea of of. of... Yeah, look, because I know for my own self, there's there's so many times that I'm, I'm I'm trying to dive deeper into prayer, whether it be during Lent or other times of the year, and then I, you know, I get a few days into it and I fail. Like, you know what? I just I give up. I, mm-hmm. I failed one day. I can't do it. It's like a stone gets rolled right, in front of the exactly. stone. Exactly. Let it be dead. Exactly. Yeah. Just give up on it and said, no, let's be persistent. Yeah. Like, no, we can. Sure, we're going to fail, but we can we can persist. Which is, and keep of course, going. the Lord's words. He comes back with persistence. Did mm. I not tell you that if you believe, you will see mm. the glory of God? 
And the glory of God is revealed in us and that our hearts are softened, that the stone is taken away from our hearts. And so he, he's persistent. Blessed be God for his persistence. Yeah. So often he, he's he's constantly chasing after us. He wants mm -hmm. our hearts. He wants us so much. Yeah. And he's been chasing us this entire Lent, even if we've been like, no, no, I'm going to have that meal on this Friday. I'm mm -hmm. going to do this thing I said I was going to give up. And, you know, sometimes he chases us in ways we don't expect. We mm. we find ourselves being chased with our stoniness, our sinfulness. But we want him to come and make us comfortable. And I, <laughs> it always strikes me that he waited four days after he heard that Lazarus oh. was sick. And um, he kept on in that place. And it's a reminder that God's time is not our time. And sometimes we expect him to come and fix these things right away. And that's just not the way in which he, he offers it. He... he um, he uh, waits a couple of days and then Martha's upset at him for waiting so long. When Martha heard, she went out to meet the Lord and Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my mother would, my brother would not have died. Yeah. That's the, the response we often give to the Lord. If you had just worked harder, then, right. then uh, the death would not have happened. Then people would not get sick and then uh, there would not be any abuses in this world. We would all be happy. We often give that response, but he wants something so much more than our comforts in this world. He wants our love and he wants us to be completely for him which will only be completely done when we get to heaven. It, it's, he, he has these other plans. And he says early, it says early on in the reading, and we heard it even last week with the, the, the healing of, of the blind man. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm, this is, I'm doing this in order that people might believe. Like he has mm -hmm. a plan that we, we can't even fathom. We can't even fully understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And even what he says, he says for the crowds, John mm -hmm. feels the freedom to be able to tell to us because he wants them to believe in his word. And it's by his word right. that Lazarus gets raised up. He doesn't go in uh -huh. and like pound on his chest and do CPR. <laughs> he calls him with his word, Lazarus, come out. And it's the word of God that moves us to this new place. That reminds me, I should make that distinction that what Lazarus experienced was a resuscitation. Hmm. And that's different from a resurrection. Jesus resurrected from the dead and he will never die again. And what we're promised in the last day is a resurrection. Hmm. That we get to be with God forever where there be no more death. Poor Lazarus had to die again. <laughs> and so the poor thing, he, he was resuscitated. He had to come back to life. And I, I would imagine that I would say to the Lord, really, I have to keep going in this life? Exactly. And then the Pharisees wanted to kill Lazarus. We read that in another part of John's mm. gospel. They were upset that the, this amazing sign took place. And the Pharisees hated hated Lazarus because of the sign, the sign of eternal life. That he offered. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> I was dead four days. I, I, I did my best to die. <laughs> and yet he called he called, and the word came out. Yeah, you, you bring up that idea that this this word re re revives him, resuscitates him, brings gives him life. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, that takes us right back to the beginning of creation. It is that word that God speaks and brings life to the to, to creation. Um, he wants to yeah. speak that word within us and bring in new life within us even. That's why it's so important for us to study the word, to mm. let the word speak to us. So I know if people go for their hour of adoration, they just take the scriptures with them. And they open maybe John's gospel or the Acts of the Apostles. And they just let that word speak to them. And the word gives life. And they walk out with more life than they had Absolutely. when they went, went into that time of scripture. So the word gives life. It's one of our statements. And, and, you know, with that, I encourage people, you know, even at the end of this Lenten season, if you want to take something else on and enter deeper or in prayer, pick up, pick up and read from the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Go find, you're listening to this podcast, go father, find Father Mike Schmidt's podcast on the Bible in the year. Start re listening yeah. to him, read it to you, and go through the scriptures and allow that word to bring new life within you. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds of great resources out there and the Lord wants to speak through them, but ultimately it's the word of the Lord that is giving such mm -hmm. life. So blessed be God for his holy word. Amen. Well, thanks for helping us dive in even just just part of this weekend's gospel like it's yeah. such a rich and long and beautiful gospel thanks for entering into it um and we pray that we may all be able to remove that stone and, and let that word give us life uh, but right. as we go forth into this fifth week of lent would you give us your blessing absolutely the lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty god bless us protect us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen, amen.